I've made another pattern since the last time I tried to cast it. The pattern's a lot simpler. It hasn't got a cut out in there. It should be a lot easier than wool. I just painted it last night and there's a little bit of paint along the middle let it take them off. Make sure the pattern goes together properly. See the two locating dolls in the pattern. The two holes, corresponding holes, they go into. The other little holes I just put putting screws in to, to extract it from the sand. Right, so that fits together like that. We'll have a go at moulding it and see if we have any better results with this one. Same procedure. Bottom of the box called a drag. That part of the pattern in upside down. That's the heaviest part, so I'll be putting the, the metal into there. That goes in there like that. I'm going to put some parting powder in. The parting powder stops the sand from sticking to the pattern. Forms a layer between the two, the two box of sand, so if you can get it, get it in pot, doing get it apart. That's why it's called pot and powder. Nice liberal coat of that. The sand we're going to use is called green sand, and not red, but it is called green. The green refers to the moisture content. The sand's actually called Mansfield red. It's red sand. It comes from Mansfield. The first bit of the sand that covers the, covers the pattern will be put through a riddle to remove any small pieces of brass or aluminium from previous casts. The moisture content of the sand is very critical. If it's too dry, it won't bond together. And if it's too wet when you put the metal in, the water can flash to steam. The way, the way you test it is you get a handful, you squeeze it, it should come off your hands clean like that. Loads of detail, you can see the fingerprints and it should break nice and clean. There's, there's a lot of sand in this box. The sand is very, very dry because it's been warm and it took nearly three hours of water to get the moisture content right. right. So we've got some nice soft sand of our pattern. Let's firm it down. A little bit more in that corner there. Right, once you've got it covered, you just back it up with ordinary mould and sand. This is compacted in place with a wooden rammer. Ramming is very important. You've got to ram it hard so it stops together but not too hard that you lose the porosity of the sand. Make sure you get it into the corners. Once we get a, a bit in, it stops the pattern from moving up. Start to give it a bit of stick. And keep the surface uneven so the sand bonds together. You don't want to form layers. Right, we've got the box full, sand around down. You do next is scrape it off flat or strickle it off as you used to say. You strickle it in. Flat like that. Then you put some vent holes in. Try not to hit the pattern. Just gives the sand a bit porosity back. It also gives you an idea of how, how hard you've got it rammed. The sand goes back into the box. That looks quite good. Yep. 
looks all right. Top part of the button goes on. Your locating holes. Then the top part of the box. These only go together one way as the pins are offset. And that's not the way it goes. It's better. So once again, pot and powder. Liberal dusting. Some people use tag and powder. The old family guys used to use the dust off the rafters and the roof. Be really good for you. This is proper stuff. I'm not sure what it is, but it'll be it'll be good for you. Right, once again. Riddle sand across the top of the pattern. Before we get too excited, we need a method of getting the metal in into the mould. That's called a sprue. It'll be a, a hole there, and then we'll have what they call a riser. This is a riser that goes next to the next to the pattern. As the gate goes from that into the pattern, and from your sprue. As a runner goes from the sprue to that, the idea is when you pour the metal in, it fills this up with hot metal and acts as a reservoir. As a casting shrinks, it goes down and uh, it takes up the it takes up the shrinkage. Let's firm that in. Bit sand around it. Put our sprue in. Go there. These big boxes, I've got plenty of room. Right, once again, we're about to riddle and we're some fine sand, cover the pattern. So I need to go around the, the sprue and the riser first to stop them moving. As he hits the bastard thing, Lee. Just a simple seed, as you said. Ram it down. Takes a bit longer on this side because you've got the, the two tubes to go around. Once you get them, once you get them sort of firmed in, it's not too bad. That one there is actually half a wife's rolling pin. Here it's got the other half. Right, we've got it rammed down. Once again, we'll scrape it off, strip it flat. We'll strip it again. Some excellent phases on casting if you read some of the some of the old books, very interesting. All the procedures still apply to sand casting. Exactly the same as it is 100 and odd years ago. Sorry, I found these now is resin, resin bonded sand, which is quicker. And obviously there's machines. Right, a few ventilation holes in once again. Now we're going to get our runner and our riser out. 
sorry, my, my sprue, which is this one, it's the one the metal goes into. You always get a little bit going down the hole, don't worry about it, we'll sort it later. Then we want our, our riser tube out. You need to invest in a bit longer tube for this one. Here she comes. Yep, I just put a, a firms the top of it down when any bits fall in when we actually come to cast it. So metal goes in there, up there. So on this one, I want a basin, pouring basin, so it's easier to hit with the molten metal. Obviously, you try not to get bits of bits to fall down, but firm it all in. You don't want a bit going in when you come to when you come to pour it. Nice smooth edges. Right. Clean the bench off. I'm gonna move the bench like this makes it easy, stops all the mess. Because I am a messy bastard. Straight up and on there. Looks decent. Right, so what happens is the metal comes down, your sprue, and it fills this up. Call it a basin. What this does is it collects any bits of shite. Grains of sand, bits of dross, they stop in there. So it's metal in, into there. Any loose bits, take them off because they'll fall in. Then from there, we'll have a runner, and the metal runs around. Like that. Carefully dig it out. Heavily modified teaspoon. Goes with a heavy mo heavily modified rolling pin. Right, so we've got our basin, our runner. Now we want our git, which lets the metal into the mold. A nice big one. Sand could be a little on the dry side. I'm going to move two, I'll do another one. Make sure we get a good note of it. Make sure our runner's nice and nice and deep so we'll get plenty of plenty of metal in there. That looks good. What we're doing now is we want to call a rabbit. Tap the pattern around a little bit just to loosen it off in the sand. Just gently tap it around. Do you see a little bit of movement? Like that. It's starting to move. Gives you a faint chance of getting it out. Couple of lifting hooks. Gently lift it out. 
If you feel it sticking, wrap it some more. Once again. That looks good. Looks very good. Very good. A little bit stuck on there. Does not matter. It's a little it's a little rough bit on top of there. Nice and clean one. Clean my gate up. All the loose bits of sand have got to come out. We don't get them out now. I can assure you they'll fall in and spoil their job. I use a set of bellows. The set of bellows are used for blowing the kids' paddling pool up with or the football up with. I'm going to try and use an airline. If you use an airline, you'll have no left in the box. See any loose bits? Turn it on the side. Make sure it's. Get them all out because the bastards will fall in. Make sure we're nice and compact with my basin. Then my runner. Right, we'll put that somewhere safe. Top of the flask, there's not that much work to do with this one. Basically, all I want to pattern out. Make sure there's no loose bits around here. Good. Once again, wrap an iron. Bit that about. It's starting to move. Don't be afraid to move it around, all it's going to do is it'll get the, the cast item slightly larger. We'll lift the screws in. That's nice. A little bit stuck there. But all you'll get, you'll just get a little rough bit on the side of your casting when you file it off. The secret of castings is a thing called a draft, the angle, everything's tapered, tapered away so when you lift it out, the hole is bigger than it's coming out of. I think draft is probably the most important word in casting. Right, once again, we'll pull it out. And then put vent holes in, the highest part of the world, quite important. Couple of vent holes just to make sure that any gas gets out. When you put them in, put your pin through and pull it right through. Don't go in and come back. Right through. Another one in there. In, right through. We'll put one in here. Right through. Right. At one time now I would, I would have sprayed the moulds with uh, brake cleaner mixed with graphite and set fire to it. I've stopped doing it because burning brake cleaner is bad for you. Uh, I'm going to start using meth or alcohol but I haven't got any. Well, I've got some alcohol but I'm not going to burn it. Right so now we'll put it back together. Always look, make sure it's going to go back together right away. Another check in there, make sure there's no loose bits, looks good. Right, and carefully lift it one on top of the other. Clean your pins up. Drop it down. That's nice. Then what I do, put a couple of cable ties round. I'll be going to wear it as well. Just to hold it together. I'll do two. 
what I'll do, I'll get the other one differently, slightly different. I can melt enough metal to pour two, which is cheap to melt. Metal to pour two as it is to pour one once you've got the furnace on. So that's one. Basically ready to go. Get a bit of wood and cover the top up until ready to ready to pour it. See all that, all that shrinking down there on the top of the riser. Uh, Wasting the, the heat to it. It's not a good plan to plant the teflon like poisonous. I think we'll go on these mills up and see what sort of thing we've got. See all the, oh, well, they've done that job. Not so good there though, with a big hole in there. With a big enough riser. One well, not so good. Good. 
nowhere near a big enough yet, a big enough riser.